At the end of my last video solving the bipolar disorder puzzle, I touched on the idea that bipolar disorder is actually part of a bigger evolutionary movement happening among mankind, and that to understand this idea we really need to go back to the very beginning. But after thinking about it, I realized that we need to go back even further. A little further. Further. Uh, no, that's too far back. Okay, that's better. Okay, I don't know about you, but I love coral reefs. And one of the things I love about them is that somehow there's sort of a cross between a plant and an animal. And yet, while it looks like a plant, as you swim by, often its active instinctive consciousness is unmistakable. And the reason is that if you get too close, the whole coral will recoil in fear. And in this way, coral reefs, humans, and every life form in between have one thing in common. When we sense danger, we shut down. We'll do whatever is necessary to protect ourselves from what's threatening us. Now in the animal kingdom, that behavior could be related to the fight or flight mechanism where the animal will either run away or attack. However, for us so-called humans, our normal behavior usually doesn't involve attacking. Rather, most of the time we just start to act like an asshole when we feel threatened. When threatened, we'll usually try and manipulate or intimidate people we think we can control that are threatening us. Or we might play nice and friendly to their face, only to screw them behind their back. And sometimes, like the reef, we'll just shut down and act like everything's okay when it's clearly not okay. And then after that, we'll usually follow it up with some nice passive-aggressive behavior, which used to be my specialty. Now, on the other hand, when we feel safe and protected, we open ourselves to life and can feed ourselves. But unlike the coral, which is basically looking to feed itself with just food, humans are looking to feed themselves with food as well as a variety of other things as well. Things like our relationships with family and friends, our creativity, our curiosity, and our passion. And when these things get fed, life becomes enjoyable, spontaneous, and even carefree. And when we are open like this, we are in a state of love. And this love can manifest itself into many forms into peace and happiness, into laughter, and perhaps most importantly, into compassion for others. Not only our own family, but our neighbors, people of other races, cultures and belief systems, even other life forms, including that coral reef. And in our love, we feel connected and alive. And to feel alive is truly living in the present moment. So by now, I hope you've figured out that love and fear are not just things that we do, but our entire states of being. And in a state of love, we're relaxed, whereas in a state of fear, we're tense. The state of love is an attracting force. The state of fear is a separating force. And where love is freeing, fear is controlling. And where love is accepting, fear is judgmental. And as a result, love is a healing process, whereas fear is hurtful. And this healing is integrating and cooperative, whereas the fear is destructive and competitive. Needless to say, love comes from the spiritual and fear purely the physical. And like I said, love is open and fear is closed. And you know, when you look at it this way, it seems like such a simple choice. Choose love, not fear. Simple. But the truth is that choosing love over fear is hardly that easy. And that most people today are living lives which are much more fear-driven than they even realize. And the reason for this is that the amount of time during our daily lives that we spend in a state of fear and that we spend in a state of love is directly related to our level of consciousness. Because as we're evolving, we're moving from more fearful, closed states, which deal with a more narrow reality, to more open, loving states, which deal with a much broader reality. Let me give you a more concrete example. Imagine this boring gray circle represents all of reality, all of the infinite possibilities of our world today. But you, you're living at the tribal or magical level of consciousness that I've already described in my videos on bipolar disorder and consciousness. Now, during your daily life, when you're having experiences which fit into the everyday routine of your own culture, you're going to accept them and you're not going to have a problem with that. However, almost all experiences or encounters that happen outside of your everyday tribal reality will be rejected. And the reason is that your ego filters out the unaccepted reality. 
So in this sense, whatever is within the ego, we are open to and receptive in a state of love. And whatever is outside the borders of our reality, outside the ego, we are closed to and respond to with a state of fear. Now fortunately for us modern people, we pass through this tribal level of consciousness quite quickly at a fairly young age. Speaking personally, I was through the tribal level probably around the age of three or four, then on to the feudal level where I stayed until about eight or nine years old, then into the conformist traditional level which held my attention probably until about the age of 16 or 17. Then I stayed in the modern level probably right through university and into my early working years of like 26, 27 years old. My first taste of the multiple perspective postmodern level came very specifically when I was 27 years old and moved to Vancouver. I can remember it distinctly. And then the importance of the present moment really struck home when I went into my psychosis at age 30, but I never really started living like that until a few years later, and that period sort of went from 33 up until now. And at every step along this journey, something very interesting has been happening. Because once we've become comfortable with one level of consciousness, we start to address our fears and let in the experiences of the next level above. And in this process, the defensive, closed ego dissolves, but only one layer at a time. And as a layer of ego dies, it allows your true self or soul to experience a broader reality and to express itself in that reality in a more authentic, honest way. Now in real life, an ego death can have you asking questions about yourself like, Who am I? What is the real world? Uh, who do I care about? And where do I fit into all this? It can be a period that can be quite confusing for people sometimes. But it can also be very energizing, because when you have a leap in consciousness in your life, you start to see the world in a completely fresh way, and things start to look new and interesting and exciting all over again. And they should, because you've opened yourself up to a whole new level of reality. And with that, you've overcome a tremendous number of fears along the way. Just to give one example from each level of consciousness, we need to remember that when you're at the tribal level, the whole point of living is to honor the spirits and the ancestors. So to move forward to the feudal level, you've got to break through your fear of these spirits and ancestors and fear that they may even kill you. At the feudal level, a big part of living is to demand respect. So to actually conform to a culture and obey their rules means that you need to start trusting people that otherwise you used to be afraid of. Now at the traditional level of consciousness, the main thing is to obey the rules and conform to society. So when you start to go against society, there can be a big fear of being punished, especially by God. Now at the modern level, everything is about achieving success, so when you actually leave that level, the biggest fear you have is a fear of failure. Now at the postmodern level, everything is about creating harmony and understanding, especially through considering other perspectives and listening to people. So to actually take a stand or have an opinion that you're going to come out and say is better than that of others, well, there you've got to face a big social disapproval, which is what I face every time I talk about spiral dynamics. And then at the power of now level, you have a deeper understanding of the importance of keeping your attention in the present moment and a knowledge that if you can do that, that your life is open to love and free of fear. So by now, I think it's safe to say that the journey of life can be a very difficult one where we have many fears to face as we grow and develop our level of consciousness and many ego deaths to go through in our lifetime. In fact, I'd describe this journey as positively heroic. And that's exactly how Joseph Campbell described it in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Because the journey of life for everyone is one in which we need to face our fears and open ourselves up to love. Now, what does all of this have to do with bipolar disorder? Well, to start with, bipolar disorder is a process which is basically putting your spiritual evolution into overdrive. Because especially once you go into an acute psychosis, it's the opportunity for you to completely express the love that is in your heart, to speak your truth, and to face and embrace the fears that are within you. And if you can do that, then a spiritual evolutionary leap in consciousness is not that far away.